So praise y'all today for you all. Praise the Most High Elohim for uh, you all joining us um, for our uh, weekly um, our weekly um, lesson. Praise y'all, prophets of humility. So hallelujah. So before I speak today, um, we're going to pray that we're going to have um, uh, Isaiah Battle is going to come and give us a, a, a little small uh, word, about 15, 15 minutes. Uh, just whatever the Most High has given to us. Uh, give it to him to share with us. So we're going to pray that he's going to come and then we're going to come and do our blessing. So hallelujah. So Almighty, we thank you for your compassion. We thank you for being our strength and our salvation. Thank you, Almighty, for, for being who you are. It's because of who you are that we exist, Almighty. Yeah, for you are the Kodash, the one, the, the one that's set apart. You are you are, you are the self-existent one. And we, it's in you that we live. It's in you that we move. It's in you, Almighty. Yeah. We have our being. So we thank you. For being our Elohim. We thank you for being our, our Father. We thank you, Almighty Yah, for being so good to us. Hallelujah. So I pray, Almighty Yah, today uh, that you would guide us and help us to grow in our trust. Give us your word. Bring forth uh, understanding, Almighty Yah. If need be, discipline. Uh, whatever your will is, we receive it, Almighty Yah. We thank you for being awesome and wonderful and magnificent. So with that being said, Almighty Yah, we just want to give you the esteem in Yahushua HaMashiach's name. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. So Isaiah Bass is going to come and give us a little small word about 10, 15 minutes that we're going to um, come back and give you give you a list. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Yah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> Praise Yah. Real quick. Uh, dear Father, please forgive me for my sins, Yah. Help me to remain humble. Help me not to uh, be prideful or have a proud look or a proud heart. In the name of Yahushua, I'm Shia. I mean, so be it. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, Malachi, dad and mess with me. Can y'all give me, uh, Malachi, could you get 1 Peter 5, verse 5 through 6? Dad, can you get James 4, verse 6 through 7? And brother, mess with me, could you get Proverbs 3, verse 34? Y'all go ahead and read those back to back to back. Mine only go to two. Then it switches to the second. First Peter. First Peter. Right like that. Yeah. This first Peter. Can somebody get, can you get it? Or can you read your scripture? Okay, James 4, <clears throat> uh, verse 6 through 7 says, But he gives but, but he gives more grace. Wherefore he said, Wherefore he said, uh, Yah resist the proud and gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. Submit yourself therefore to Elohim. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Thank you. Could you read one more time, a little louder? <laughs> but he giveth more grace. Wherefore said Yah. Wherefore he said, Yah resist the proud. But gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to Elohim. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, yeah, that one don't got just got it. So, okay. the, the whole thing? No, just five, verse five and six. Okay. Verse five, six. Likewise, you who are less experienced, submit to leaders. Further, all of you should clothe yourselves in humility toward one another, because God opposes the arrogant, but to the humble he gives grace. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, so that at the right time he may lift you up. scoffs at the scoffers and scorn the scorners, yet he gives his undeserving favor to the low, the humble, and the afflicted. Thank you. So Proverbs 334 says, surely he scorns the scorners, but he gives grace unto the lowly. Uh, all three of the, all three of the uh, brothers read verses pertaining unto uh, pride and humility. It's funny that y'all gave me this as well, but um, <clears throat> we read Psalm 32. 
It says, blessed is he uh, through verse 5. Verse 1 through verse 5. It says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is a man to whom Yahuwah imputes not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my warring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into, drought of the, into the drought of the summer. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess, confess my transgressions unto you who would, and you forgave us the, the iniquity of my sin. Selah. All right. So the reason I had though they, they, they read the, uh, those three scriptures was to show you all in verse, uh, excuse me, in Psalm 32, what David was doing. At first, David was very prideful because it says in verse three, when I kept my silence, my bones waxed old through my warring all the day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. So keeping your mouth closed is a sign of pride to Yah when you need to pray. And it's said a few times in scripture, pray without ceasing. The men are to always pray so they don't lose heart. And when you don't pray, it is the same. It is very similar to you being dirty, you working, you getting yourself dirty, you playing in the mud. Don't take a bath. You'd rather wallow in your stink. You'd rather wallow in sin. You'd rather have those infections on you. Because being dirty for a long time can cause infections. Especially if you don't clean it or it may make a stink rise up. You don't know where it's coming from. And so that's the same thing with praying. When you don't pray to Yah, it shows that you are very prideful. And it shows him that I don't need you. But how can you say that when David was a man after Yah's own heart and he needed Yah? He says that his bones waxed old. He was roaring all the day long when he kept his mouth closed. Yah's hand was heavy upon him. But when he said he would confess his sins, he realized that Yah forgave him. Then he could actually feel a little a way better than he did. He was, his bones wasn't waxing old anymore. He wasn't roaring anymore because he humbled himself under Yah's mighty hand. Hallelujah. And so when you do not pray and when you don't, and when you don't seek Yah, that's a very proper thing to do. Because uh, verse 30, excuse me, verses 1 and 2 out of Psalms 32 says, Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man who, to whom Yah does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. So David is trying to tell you how you can be blessed, but in verse 3 he told you how he used to be. When I kept my silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My moisture turned into the drought of the summer. It was rough for David. And a lot of us, it can get rough for us because we don't want to pray to Yah. We begin to condemn ourselves. We begin to keep our mouths shut. Then you begin to overthink and you can start suppressing things. And you have, we have the audacity to ask, Yah, where are you? How dare we? Aren't we supposed to go to Yah so we can actually get cleared? Dad, can you read 1 James uh, 4, 4 through 6 one more time? James? Yep. Ooh, what's it for? Yes, James. <clears throat> but he resisted, excuse me, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he, wherefore he saith, Elohim resist the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to Elohim. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Right. So when we don't resist the devil, well, excuse me, when we keep our mouth closed, we give a foothold to the enemy. Because he can begin to plant any thought into your mind so where you can believe it. That has happened to me. Oh, my parents don't love me. Oh, they don't listen to me. Well, Isaiah, you're not speaking. Uh, where is Yah? Well, Isaiah, you're not praying. I'm not being led by Yah. I miss Yah. Well, Isaiah, you're not praying. I said, you're not supposed to be, you're not doing the thing that you're supposed to do. So how can I say I'm missing Yah or people don't listen to me when I'm not talking? That doesn't make sense. That makes me seem like the nut. That's a conundrum. If I begin to say, oh, 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 where is Yah? And I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. It makes me a fool. And that's very prideful of me. Because how can I reciprocate or give somebody something and not, not, they're not coming to me for it? Yes, though God knows your thoughts, he wants you to talk to him. I can't just go to my brother and be mad at him and he got money or he got shoes. I'm like, I'm mad at you. For what? It don't make no sense. Whereas if I ask Malachi, can I get a pair of shoes? 
And he, he says yes, oh, I can't be mad at him anymore because it's just. Or he says no, can't be mad at him because at least I asked. But if you just mad at Yah or you won't open your mouth to Yah or you feel like your sins are forgiven, that's where your fault is. Swallow your pride, begin to pray to Yah. Because if we do not swallow our pride, what did Proverbs say? What did First Peter say? What did James say? He resists the proud. And verse 4 says, For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. And nobody can beat Yah. We can't just push Yah's hand up like this. No. Yah, forgive me. I admit that I was wrong. I admit that I was prideful. I confess my sins. And what did David say in verse 5? I acknowledge my sin unto thee. Who? Yah. And mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto Yah. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. And if we look back at verse 1 and 2, David beca became blessed because Yah forgave him. Yah is not resisting him anymore. He's giving grace to David because Yah did not have to forgive David for what he did. Yah does not have to forgive any of us for what we do. But when we humble ourselves, Yah acknowledges that and he gives grace to that. He oh, sees, yeah. okay, you're not being prideful anymore. You have humbled yourself. You're confessing. Now, I can show grace to you. Now, I can make sure things are not bad for you. But when you keep your mouth closed, you're going to always see things are bad for me because guess who you're not resisting then? Hasatan. And he will put any and everything into your head to make you go against Yah. But if you swallow your pride and actually pray, actually vent to Yah, then Yah will give grace to you. Hallelujah. Also, one more thing. The book of Daniel. I think it's chapter 4. Could you read uh, the last few verses there? About Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel 4, what? Uh, got you in a couple seconds. Daniel 4. 37. <clears throat> now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. Thank you. So we see we have a great example in Nebuchadnezzar. We know his story. He thought that everybody came to him because of his own doing. In reality, that was not true. So being prophet within himself got him looking like a beast for quite some time in front of all his subjects, making him look like, oh, not really the king as he said he was. The true king of heaven humbled him to show you I'm the king, I'm the one who provided for you. You don't provide for them, I provide for you so you can provide for them. So if we take Nebuchadnezzar as a good example, which I do, remain humble. Can it get hard sometimes? Yes, because you, we all know that we have certain talents and abilities. But if you remain humble, Yah will give grace to you and multiply those talents and abilities. And not just stay in your pride, because if you stay in your pride, what did Nebuchadnezzar say out of his own mouth? He is able to abase those who walk in pride. And I'm not trying to be abased personally by Yah because he has walked contrary to us too long and we walk contrary to him. So it's time to humble ourselves and walk according to Yah's word. Stop being prideful all the time. Stop being stiff-necked. But lower your neck. Be lowly of heart. Be meek. Then Yah will give you grace. Then he will begin to turn away your captivity. Then he will begin to turn away your problems in your household. Then he will give you the things that you need so you can live. But if you are prideful, don't be resisted. And that's without a doubt. Not only by Yah, but also by people. Because people can't pluck you out of Yah's hands. And that's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Praise Praise Hallelujah. Yah. Hallelujah. So praise Yah for that word uh, the, that he gave um, Isaiah to give to us. Hallelujah. 
So praise y'all. Um, pride. You know, it's, 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 it's very important that we don't walk in pride. This is part three. This is the final final lesson of um, pride versus humility. And uh, I think it's very fitting for Isaiah to, to um, come and teach what, what, what Yah has uh, placed upon his heart. It's very important that we don't walk in a in, in, in work of pride, uh, that we do walk in humility. As you see behind me, these pictures that we have on, 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 on the screen, you got a man with his chest poked out with his thumbs to it, like this right here. And, that's, and that, that represents pride. But not only just someone who's puffed up, even to have low self-esteem can be confused as being you know, uh, humble or meek. And to have low self-esteem or, or even walk in the spirit of depression can be pride because it's all about you. Mm. Me, 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 my, 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 myself, I, I, I. And you know, life is not all about you. When the Most High created uh, the, the heavens and the earth and when he gave, you know, uh, mankind, he was thinking about man. When he redeemed man with his son, you know, through his son, Yahushua, by him giving his life on the stake, that was for us. You know, and, and so, so and, and, and we're to, to pay attention to that. For so long, we, we've made it all about us. How about making it no longer about us? You know, how about start making it about other people? You know, for example, our communities out here are dying because it's about us. Most so about losing anything. And it's not good. Almighty, y'all help us not to make it about us. I pray, Almighty, in the name of Yahushua Mashiach, that you would give us wisdom and understanding and help us not to make things about us. I, I, I've seen so much happen in this city that I live in in the past few weeks. For, 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 for a few years especially, for the past few weeks, I had a friend of mine or a guy that I grew up with. He was murdered last week. It's about six in the morning, it said on, 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 on as I was reading the report, the, the, the news. So they came in the house about six in the morning and shot him. You know, and the female that was also in the home shot her too. He's dead. He was dead by 845, he was pronounced dead. I don't know the, the condition of the female, but that's a bad thing. And my question is, where are all the believers at now? You know, while, while we're in our sealed up, you know, buildings, you know, but our streets are lost, you know, especially, especially Israel, you know, Israel is lost. Yeah, we, 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 we're unhealthy, you know, we're consumed with politics, you know, we're caught up with gangs, you know, all kinds of things to make it about us. You know, I, I see people sometimes on, on social media making posts with scriptures, but they got their, their face on, the, on, on in the picture. <laughs> How's it about you? Well, you got to have your selfie. It's about us. It's pride. Pride brings deceit. Pride deceives you. It puts you in a position in your mind to make you think you're somewhere that you're not. Yeah, check out, you know, Lucifer. When you look at Ezekiel 28, as we studied last week, how art thou fallen, O Lucifer? And it said that pride was found in it. Deceit was found in his heart. Mm -hmm. You know, he thought within himself that he's going to raise his throne up above the stars of Yah. How stupid of him. Oh, I call the devil stupid. I call him that, I call him that on the regular. And the thing that's so amazing is he know he's stupid. Because guess what? The, the Most High, Yahuwah, the Most High created him. He the one that put the, the onyx in the, in, in the carbuncle and the ruby and the, and the pearl and, the, and all them stones in him. And that was, only to, that, that was only able to show his beauty based on the light that was shining through him. And the light that was shining through him is the light of Yah. The or, as we know in, in Hebrew, O-W-R, means the enlightenment, the illumination, the knowledge of Yah, the understanding of Yah shines through him. <clears throat> so when, when, when the other Malachim or the, or, or, or the other spiritual beings in the heaven saw him, they only saw his beauty based on how Yah enabled him to look. But deceit was found in his mind, in his heart. And he thought within himself, he's going to raise his throne of the brothers of Yah. But we know the testimony of Yahushua. <clears throat> what testimony was there? When you look at Luke 10, 19, he said out of his own mouth, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. So, so, so the Messiah testifies that the adversary fell. 
And he fell from heaven like lightning. And told us in so many words, that's a life thing. Don't need to rejoice in that. But rejoice rather that our name is written in the book of life. So, 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 so pride can cause you to deceive yourself. It can cause you to fall. And it can cause you to fall fast. He fell pretty quick. Uh, uh, Isaiah calls him the bright and morning star. Yeah, he was a bright. He was the, 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 the name Lucifer means light bearer. You know, uh, uh, what? Lucifer morning star. Lucifer morning star. But you know what though? His name was changed from being called Lucifer to being, to being called the devil. He was called the devil, the adversary. The word devil didn't say Satan. So he was called a devil who became the adversary. Who, who became an enemy of the Most High Yah. He was cast down. And not only was he cast down, but a third of the Malachim, the third of the messenger was, was cast down along with him. You even had the 22 watchers. Who Hanok even called them the watchers. When you look in Genesis, it said they mingled in with the daughters of men. And that's how the Nephilim was born. So we, so we have demons that was produced by prideful, prideful angels. And, and, and what's my point? That in your pride as a man, you can, you can produce also bad seed. And you can cause a destruction of your own children because of your own disobedience. See, our prideful looks and our prideful walks and our prideful ways does not just affect us. But it affects other people trying to get our point across. How do you think murder got, 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 got in play? Mm -hmm. Look at Cain. Because Cain was full of pride. Scripture says that when Cain took his offering to y'all, so y'all had no respect for Cain, no his offering. Did he come to Cain and ask Cain, why are you so downcast? Mm. You know, if you try to do good, you can do good. He tells Cain this. He, he says, sin is lying at your door. And its desire is to have you. But you must overcome it. Cain was in his pride and refused to humble himself. So sometime later when him and her note, excuse me, when him and Abel, Havel was in the field, they got Cain got beside himself. They got to fight. Cain killed his own brother. Tried to hide him. Most I come to him, and that's what he said. Where's his brother? Cain in his pride asked a, a question: Where am I his keeper? And y'all said, "What have you doing? Your brother blood is crying up to me from the ground." Cain had no remorse. He had no moral compass to guide him, so he had no remorse. So when the Most High punishes Cain. He, instead of him being repentant and remorseful for his sin. You know what he do? Oh, my sin is greater than I can bear. It's pride. You're not sorry for what you've done. You just don't want to receive the punishment. Many of us are on the same way. Not sorry for doing wrong. Not sorry for the mess up. We just don't want to take the punishment. Oh, it's too, it's too heavy for me. When they see me, they're going to know I've done something. They're going to get me. Yes, that, that, that's a coward act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, y'all is merciful, put a mark on it. But according to Jackson Kane's whole house fell on it. Some much deserving, you know, taking his brother's life. Or we can look at Adam. Pride got the best of him. Most high gave him a commandment. And many of us are the same way. We fell at keeping the commandments of Yah and blame others. Instead of being responsible and accountable for the problems that we cause upon ourselves. You know, the most high is quick to mercy, slow to anger. And when you look at the scripture, the people who he did punish, blame other folks. Yeah, yeah, they did. Because look at Cain. Look at, look, at, look at Adam, I mean. Most high gave him a commandment. So look at all these trees in the garden. You can have some of that food off these trees. Adam had the opportunity to eat from the tree of life. But instead, Adam ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And when the voice of Yahuwah came to deal with him, Adam hid himself. Why he hide himself? Because he was afraid. His pride had the best of him. Instead of him being repentant, trying to hide from the problem. 
Then when he was exposed, he said, well, the woman you gave, he blamed y'all. Mm -hmm. She can humble herself near that woman. Mm -hmm. No, Eve, the serpent beguiled me. The serpent was caught. I believe the serpent was the character of, of Satan, of Lucifer, of the devil, based on the scripture calling him a devil, that old serpent. I believe that tree that he that he hid behind was the character of, of, of the adversary. He tried to hide trying to hide behind the, the knowledge he ate from. But the knowledge that he ate of couldn't hold water. When he had an opportunity to eat from the tree of life, but he chose to go a different route. So y'all put him out of the garden. You know why? Y'all put him out of the garden because of y'all's mercy. He didn't want man to live in sin forever. Because a man would have eaten from that tree, he would have lived, he would have lived in the sea forever. But the Most High had to let man die for his mercy. Because you can die and be escaped. You know why I say that? Because our Messiah is the first fruit from the dead. And he reconciled us back to Yah. And so now that even though we are in him, we can die to ourselves. And there is a such thing by faith as a resurrection. Yeah, as a matter of fact, who just says he is the resurrection. He didn't humble himself, though. He didn't let his pride get the best of him. I got plenty of scriptures in, in, in that I can use about pride that it cause us to fall. Pride is deceitful. Oh, it's deceitful. Yeah, man. You know, Solomon said beauty is vain. Yeah, because that beautiful thing you look on the, on the shelf can have a disgusting heart. Anybody ever seen that movie uh, years ago, Shallow Hal? You know, they put them, the roots on them or whatever, and he was able to see people for who they were. So the woman who seemed to be beautiful was really ugly. And the one, you know, from his perspective, and the one who was ugly from his perspective was beautiful to him, he was able to see the heart of people. I pray the most high help us to see people like Shallow Hal. Mm. Mm. So we're going to continue to be deceived by the adversary, think something is beautiful when it's dirty and bad for you. Mm -hmm. You know, an uh, apple that got a beautiful core, that they got a beautiful ye uh, uh, yellow or green or red skin, if it got a, a, a worm on the inside, it's still rotten. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't want to eat nothing that got that beautiful with a worm. Putting the worm out, on, putting the worm out, don't mean you pull the residue out with it. And you never know what that worm putting that out. But it looked good. But it can make your stomach hurt. Or put you like sleeping beauty, have you sleeping dead. You know, you dreaming. Wait for Prince Charming. Wait for he'll never show up. Mm. Messiah is not Prince Charming, is he? Praise God for his compassion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pride deceives. I said we 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 said that last week. We fall last and even today. Says pride, a lifting up of oneself. My son was just teaching about pride and humbling yourself. Showed showed, showed a, a perfect example. Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar got the best of himself. You can see his pride and a whole lot of errors. One one thing that showed his pride when he put them boys in that put them boys in that fire because they wouldn't bow before him. Made a statue and wanted them to commit idolatry by year on by, by by fearing the statue by by giving homage to him like he was a like like he was a, 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 a mighty one. Like he was an L. I've seen nowhere in the scripture, especially in the sea far where they call him El Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> he was not a mighty one, period. Most high saw his pride, gave him a dream, put a tree in the middle of the earth, had the king shout out, cut it down. This tree was one symbolizing strength to house things. Yeah, birds and stuff that was in them, in them trees. So this tree was a what 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 was something that was able to sustain life and provide and give protection and shelter. Most I gonna cut it down, but leave the stump. Most I was talking to Nebuchadnezzar. Nobody could, could understand Yah because nobody had a relationship with Yah to be able to tell the king. Except for the appointment of Yah. And I want to say this, I'm going to push pause and say this, that, 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 that if you want to hear from Yah, you can't hear from Yah in idolatry. 
And you cannot hear from Yah in religion. You can only hear Yah through Yah's chosen vessels. So trying to conjure up things and people in ways to hear Yah, you're fooling yourself. The best way to hear Yah is to humble yourself. Hallelujah. And hear Yah from Yah's choice, not your own choice. Mm. So none of these people can hear y'all speak. No matter what kind of pressure Nebuchadnezzar put on. But praise y'all for his compassion that somebody found Daniel. <laughs> and praise y'all for Daniel's fortitude and his humility. To tell Nebuchadnezzar, look here man, it's about you. And I wish you would repent. You need to repent. Because you didn't, didn't pull yourself up and thought you didn't did it by your own bootstraps. And I, forget, I guess you forgot old King, your boots ain't got no laces in them. So it's not your ability to do what you're doing. The most high done it for you. And you just repent. See, a year later, daddy goes to his house. Never did still proud with his chest out, the big thumbs. Yeah, look how I'm doing. Yeah, I'm a man. I'm on top of the world. It's bigger than MJ and Jan 8 ball. We on top of the world. He got what we do. <laughs> While Nebuchadnezzar was speaking, the Most High snatched mm. the words out of his mouth. He lost his mind for two, for, for seven seasons. I believe in a couple of years, two and a half, some years. Look here, out there, naked, with no clothes on, half down his back. Thinking this and told him like bird claws. He came up naked in grass. Had to remember that the most high was the most high. And I'm going to tell you something. If you walk around in pride, he can humble you the same way. Because warning always comes before destruction. We as the body of Messiah need to humble ourselves. Quit walking in pride. We as Yahshua should humble ourselves. Quit Our pride has us looking to the politician. Mm. Our pride has us debating one, with one another. Mm -hmm. Our pride has us going against our leadership, mm -hmm. got us going astray. I'm not going to name any names, but I've, I've seen people even supposed to be uh, uh, deep and, and knowing they're Israel, but they're going astray. Why? Because they don't have a leader. Then in their pride say, you don't need a leader. Let me tell you something. Those are foolish men mm -hmm. <laughs> and the women who tell you you don't need a leader. Then they're the case, why are they up trying to teach somebody? Mm -hmm. They're trying to be something to tell you. They're trying to be something to you. They're telling you that you don't need. Mm -hmm. That's kind of stupid. And if you look at yourself, you're kind of stupid for believing it without you consulting y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm just being honest. Because the adversary can make you want to be your own leader, put you in pride, and lead you astray. What we have to do is humble ourselves. Not lift ourselves up, but we need to lower ourselves so that y'all can move on our behalf. He resists the proud. So if you feel resistance in your life, through your prayer life, through things happening, maybe you want to check yourself. You know what they say, check a check up from the neck up. Look around from the shoulder down. How about don't even do that? How about you look in the mirror and look at your whole self? And say, you know what, it's bad. Let me change. Let me change my ways. You need to walk in the ruach of humility. Walk in a nava. Be gentle, be meek. One thing that I think that was a precious thing is when we saw, when you read Numbers 12, most I always use is mediators, for example. We got two mediators as there's some great examples. One of them is greater than the other. Moses was a great example. Yahushua is a greater example. But let's go to Moses first. When you look at Numbers 12, it says Miriam and Aaron was talking about Moses because he married a Cushite woman. He married an African woman, a Hamite, because he, he was a man of color himself. But she was not a Shemite, she was a Hamite. She was an Ethiopian woman or a Cushite. And it says that, yes, indeed, he married an Ethiopian. 
And it said what Moses, what, what Miriam said to Aaron, and it said, and Yahuwah heard them. But when you look at verse 3, this what stood out to me. It says, and now the man Moses. They would have said, now this man Moses was the meekest man over all the earth. That's significant. Because it shows you something. That through your humility, Yah has your back. Because he fights your battles because you're humbling yourself. So pride versus humility, you need to choose whose side you're going to be on. The, the side of humility or the side of pride. Because I've never seen in the scripture how y'all help the proud. I always see in the scripture how he resists the proud, how he chops them down, how he removes them out of their place, how he punishes and judges and deals with the pride. Pride is but in the scripture, when it comes to being humble, oh, he stands up. He stands up like he's rocking back and forth ready to bump. <laughs> because he, he, he defends his people. He ain't playing with you. He, he is no respecter of persons. Psalms 105, verse 15 says, he reproved kings for their sakes. Mm -hmm. It's a song of Moses. So he reproved kings for his people's sake, saying, touch not mine anointed. And do my prophets no harm. Yeah, because he realized that these people belong to Yah. He had a problem with, with, with Israel being attacked from the back for no reason. Amalek. By Amalek because of their pride. Mm -hmm. So 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 he called him Miriam. He said, Come here. How let me in. Miriam, Aaron, and Moses. And he said, Look here, I'm telling you something. When I when there's a prophet among you, I Yahuwah reveal myself to him. I make myself known to him, and I come to him in visions and dreams. But not so with Moses. No, I talk to him mouth to mouth or face to face. And that's been reiterated because Exodus 30 says he talked to him face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And then we have a good conversation talking about personal things. I, I, I talk to Moses. He hear me audibly. He's able to even see a figure of me. That's how close we are. So Yah was upset with Miriam. And look at when he left, she was leprous. So Yah punished. He punishes the pride. The, the proud. He allows the proud to know they're spiritually dead. I can precept that. Look at uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar, uh, 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 Uzziah. Uzziah got zero eyes beside his forehead when he went to the temple to light the burning incense. Look at. Uh, uh, Epiphanes, what's his first name? Antiochus. Antiochus Epiphanes, when he went behind into the temple, trying to catch him out. Most high head man of king beat him up, beat him up out of the temple. Look at Second Maccabees, Antiochus Epiphanes was so proud, he said he's going to make Yasserah, he's going to make Jerusalem a common burial place. That's what he said. Most high carried him in the Ruach, knocked him off, up off his, up off his, uh, his uh, uh, what you call the thing, the thing they ride up on the chariot. His horse. Mm -hmm. Not the mouth. Look here. When the man fell to the ground, he had left pains throughout his entire body. He stinks so bad it came through his breath. Nobody can stand to be around him. He began to be nice to all of Yasharal. But guess what? He never said he was healed. He died in his agony. But he died in his pain. See, the most high, he ain't got time for the prophet. He ain't got time for the self deceived ones neither who were in their pride. Even though there was a man at his own heart, y'all forgave when he punished him. To you, David. Oh, let's talk about it. Was a man at y'all's own heart. And David looked over one day and saw a woman. She must have been fine to him some kind of way. But well, this woman had a husband. Man, woman, I'm telling you right now. If you mess up with a person who's got a spouse, y'all gonna judge you. Judgment's coming your way unless you repent. You don't have many, many more days ahead of you before he exposes you. Make a decision, it's your life that's at stake here. I was speaking from the, from the Ruach of Yah, prophetically telling you this. He seen Bathsheba. He had to have her. He had sexual relations with a man's wife. 
He had that man killed. Most high didn't like that. There's arrogance, there's pride, there's conceit, there's ill will. Nathan goes to David and says, Look here, King, I got a report, I got to tell you something. He says, There's a man that had a lamb, a little sheep. Sheep was like family. He slept with him, ate with him, the precious sheep. His neighbor had 10. Well, the neighbor had 10 sheep, had some company. Because David had 10 wives. Instead of him going, instead of him going to get one of his own sheep and get to the company, he went over there and got, got his neighbor's sheep. Mm -hmm. He killed him and served it to his friend. David got offended. No, he killed. It was rough. He was upset. Ah! We're going to get him. Yeah, his own anger. He has spoke judgment on himself. He had to see how y'all felt about the situation. To have an understanding of what he's going to be dealt. Mm. He said, It's you. It's you, old king. Thus says Yahuwah. Oh, Psalms 51. <laughs> great, great song. Hands down. Have mercy upon me, Yahuwah, according to your loving kindness. He, please take not your rule of death from me. I want you to watch me and purge me. Watch me with his He said, deep before you, you only have I seen. And then when he said, it was in sin, one consumed me. He said, oh, I was born in sin. This song got out of, I was shed. I mean, it's deep with it. The men and the women who got the great oratorical skills can quote it and bring tears to your eyes and cheers on top of your head when they see it. But the punishment that was given to him, y'all tell David through Nathan, look here, it's going to be out of, out of your descendants. In every generation, one of your descendants is going to, go, going to die a violent death. They're still going on to this day, of the descendants of David. But the one he had to deal with first, was Absalom. He go David being being all, all hurt like a son that died. That's your enemy trying to kill you. But guess what though? You caused it. Let me explain something to you. It's your pride that can cause your children to go astray. It's your pride that can hurt people. Pride is what my mama and them was saying in the old school. It's a book of bear. It's a book of bear. You know what a book of bear is? I guess it's something that stick on you and can't get up off of you. Book of bath, so irritating. I don't he's rough. Where a book of bath is. I'm looking at a book and a bath. Some sticky sticking and they can maul you at the same time. Some devastating, I reckon. There's even twix. Pride causes you to be deceived by your own wisdom. I'm pretty sure the wisdom that Yah gave Solomon was not to be included with Solomon's own wisdom. Solomon was wild. We heard of his, we heard of Solomon's goodness, good wisdom that Yah gave him. Remember the woman, the, the, the two women that had the babies? Mm -hmm. That was wise of Solomon. But you remember the command in the Torah about the kings? Deuteronomy 17. And you got all these folks who want to have more than one wife. <laughs> Deuteronomy 17 mm -hmm. says this. It says, it, it says that, that, that the king should think of him no more than one wife. That was David's problem. Solomon had 700. Mm. Y'all said the Torah, I don't even go back Eat. to Egypt. Don't make no comment. Solomon made Come an allegiance. Mm. Got horses and everything. It's, it's because of Solomon the kingdom was split. Mm. See, pride break up families. Pride destroyed nations. Pride will cause you to fall. No matter how wise your words may be, it's your actions. I know many of y'all have never read the Testament of Solomon. I have. Solomon fell through fornication. Pride caused him to get hot. They got Zim with them in numbers. They fornicated. See, pride causes you to sin. 
It's one of the roots, I reckon. It caused it caused Lucifer to sin. Became the adversary. It caused Adam to sin. It caused David. It shook Nebuchadnezzar up and tore up Uzziah. It had Naaman stuck. Naaman got so offended because the prophet didn't come out there and cut himself and scream loud. He sent him a message. Told him to go deal. Naaman's pride got him in a position. Let me tell you something. If your pride got you in a position of being spiritually dead, humility is the only thing that's going to bring you out. Naaman had to humble himself. He had to go do it Yah's way. He said, go dip yourself in the Jordan seven times. You'll come out clean if you dip seven times. And then he told him, then we got offended. Ain't that river what it does? That's a better river. That's one better, two. All of them better than the rivers of Israel. His servant said, Master, if he had told you to do something great, you would have done it. That pride. I'm trying to, he showed him a lesson. But he, he didn't tell you to go dip. Well, Naaman dip and saw himself clean, he humbled himself. Realized that it is the Elohim of Yasharal. And it's his way, his way only. So let me tell you this as I take my shots. Your Baptist, your Methodist, your Christianity can't get you nowhere. And those of you who are in the so-called truth and can't humble yourself to a leadership, you in your pride as well. Those of you women who can't submit themselves, those of you men who can't humble yourselves, y'all rebukes you. Because you and your pride. You show you Israel, but you show yourself to be smarter than your brother. You got to realize you at one point in time was lost too. Whether you was in Israel all your life, whether you found out later on, you were still lost and you still sinned. You know how I know that? That's precepted. Paul said, for all have sinned. Well, we don't want to believe in Paul. Well, guess what? I believe in the Ruach Kodesh. I believe in Yah, and I believe Yah knows Paul. Who are you to say Yah can't use his mind? But you want to speak about who you are. When the scripture, when the scripture clearly tells us that Yah is no respected person. So it gives us the mind to say who Yah can and can't use. Who he will and who he won't. Then the high priest prophesied unaware and said that it was good for one man to die on behalf of all people. Mm -hmm. So who are we to say who, who are we to say who y'all can use? That man spoke the words of y'all and didn't know. So we didn't get our hands off things we have no clue of. <laughs> yeah, shut our mouth. See, you all, religion ain't gonna help you this time. Now, let me tell you this, and you will see in many days, he's going to pull religion out the way. He's going to show you what your denominations can do for you, and that's nothing. He's going to pull the power from the politicians. And it's going to put you in a position to repent or die. You're going to see y'all, you're going to perish in your sins, because now it's on you, my friend. See, it's time for us to get past us. Hallelujah. We got too many people out here dying. And here we are still trying to be deep. We got too many people out here dying from drug addiction and gun violence. But we're trying to grow our assemblies instead of trying to build people. We're giving them false illusions to give them to join us, but when they get there, they're broken. But the sad thing about it is they're still stuck. We got people being offended because they take they can't take correction, but in reality, that's what you need. Correction is, 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 is good like mm -hmm. penicillin. It's good like a, a medicine. 
There's, there's this nasty to the taste. But when it gets all in your system, it pushes out all those things that's not good for you. It's like a probiotic. It gives you the bacteria that you need to survive. But you know what? Not being able to take correction is like taking an antibiotic. Even though we think we're getting rid of we're getting rid of the infection, we're still getting rid of things that our bodies need. And so what we need is a balance. And correction is that balance that keeps us in line with y'all. Yeah, I'm telling y'all the truth. Praise y'all for his goodness. Hallelujah. James 4, 6 through 10 says, but he gives more grace. That's what it says, then. Wherefore he says, Elohim resists the proud. It's like a hitting the wall and you fall. But gives grace unto the humble. So then it says, therefore, submit yourselves, therefore, to the mighty one. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Because the devil can't stand up with humility. Humility defeats the pride. When you humble yourselves under Yah, 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 Yah comes up through you and fights for you. I heard Prophetess Deborah Hoskins say something very powerful today when she was the other day when she was dealing with the, the, the Hebrew boys. She said that uh, they had no idea that they was going to survive or not. Mm. They didn't know that y'all was going to bring them out of their fire. But they knew they were not going to give in to the adversary. Because they knew what the Torah said. And they knew them honoring y'all was a, a humility to y'all. So you know they told that king, Nebuchadnezzar, who got beside himself. We're not careful on king to battle you. No, we're not going to do that. No, we're not going to bow to you. Our Elohim is more than able to bring us out of this thing. Your humility causes y'all to fight for you. Because your humility keeps you in a position of being aware of y'all, and it also keeps you in a position of being prayerful. So when they went into that fight, out of full obedience, so a man walked around there with him. Those men, some of the men that threw them in, burnt up. But one man just said, look here, man, look here. Did we throw three, did we throw three, three of them into the fire? Did we throw three of them into the fire, then? Mm. But why I see four men walking around? Mm. And one of them looked like a mighty one. One of them looked like a man. But there ain't no man. When the boys came out, they didn't come out with no black suit on their face. As if they was in the chimney. They didn't come out having an asthma attack. Couldn't breathe because of smoke in, 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 inhalation. They came out like their forefather Abraham. Huh? Cords burnt up off from them, but unseen, unseen from the smoke. The thing that had you bound when you were in humility, you break free from it. Because humility causes you to walk in obedience. Yeah, draw nigh to Elohim, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Now I have to say this right here. It was an elder Draper. It was at Burn Avenue, Church of God in Christ years ago. And I have a lot of respect for him. I was about 21, 22 years old when I met him. I met him in the bathroom. You know what he told me? The father. The father. The, the father Draper. You know what he told me? He said, son, keep your hands clean. i never forget that. Keep your hands clean. Yes, sir. Do what's right, live right. 
Don't put your hands in nothing that's going to dirty you up. James says, James says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. And purify your heart. You're double-minded. Be sincere. Your heart is your intellect, your emotions. I think I feel I won't. Purify your heart, you double-minded. Be afflicted in morning and weak. Let your laughter be turned to morning and your, your, your joy to heaven is humble yourself in the sight of Yahuwah. And he shall lift you up. How many folks can humble themselves? Now we get our pride. We do it in every area of our life. Trying to abuse it in our authority, on our jobs, to our people under us. You do, I'm the boss. That's pride. And you can be wrong. We do it in our marriages, husbands and wives. Sometimes neither one of y'all can shut up. Both of you got to have the last word. You got to have a say so. You be quiet. You be quiet. You are submissive. You ain't honorable. You know, we go tit for tat. Using our minds to battle one another. Shoot down. Look here. Smart in our own eyesight. That's all intelligent in the speech. Saying things hurting one another. Killing each other with the speech. Thinking we're right. What the scripture could have tells us a man is right and well in his own eyesight. And we think we're sounding good. But you know what? When we say what we're saying, we know we ain't saying it out of love. We're saying it out of pride. We tell one another a scripture that we should be applied to our own individual selves. You know, we tell each other out of pride. A soft answer turns away wrath. And we say it out of pride, trying to get them to shut up. <laughs> Instead of being a, 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 in our own heart. Then we say, look here, don't tell me you're sorry. I don't want to hear Pride. I ain't going to tell you anyway. Pride. Don't come get in my face. Pride. I don't want to get in your face. You, as you can see, I always try to stay from you. Pride. Never ever being able to humble ourselves and then ask the stupid questions. What stupid questions did we ask? Why the devil got to always win? You know why he got to always win? Because you let him win. It's like you go and lay down in front of him and then every count of 10 when you're in your pride. Mm hmm yeah, can't humble ourselves. Yeah, we 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 knock our own self out. We we accept defeating ourselves because we refuse to humble ourselves. Yeah, I can tell you how I tell you. You know why why I can say how I'm saying? Because I walk into the times myself. Yeah, I've been pride myself at times. Feeling convicted after the moment. You know, that's not good enough, you all. How about using the real discernment that we say we got? You know, you know, pride is the sermon becoming just middle. Yeah, y'all show me about such and such. And when y'all show us and all of a sudden we develop an attitude and we want to look down upon them and say they're in sin. But I, 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 I got I, I a kind of bit to differ with you. You know, when you read the scripture, from my perspective, when y'all show you about somebody, I think we should pray. Pray for them. You know, y'all shows Samuel, you know, about Saul. It says Samuel cried all night. Oh, Samuel was upset. He was hurt. Yeah, because he saw y'all reject somebody. And I'm pretty sure it did not. It didn't, it, 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 it didn't do him too well. And he go to Samuel and say, look here, man. He go to Samuel and say, look here, man. You should do what y'all told you to do. Yeah, man. Saul got beside himself in his pride. Samuel said, I'm going to tell you something, man. Obedience is better than witchcraft. I mean, better, uh, 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 obedience is better than sacrifice. Then he tell the witchcraft is uh, disobedience as a sin of witchcraft. You know. But Saul was in his pride. He couldn't humble himself. You, we, we, got, we, we, we got so many, we got so much in there to look at. You know, how we need to humble ourselves. Because many of us, if we don't, if we don't humble ourselves, we may just meet the fate of some of them people met. Let's humble ourselves. Praise God for his goodness and his loving kindness. You know what? Pride costs the man. I, 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 I pray that y'all put this on the streets. Let your bloods and your crips and your folks and your vice lords and your GDs look at this. Once you grow up, men, 40 something years old, steal a blood. 50 years old, 40, you steal a, a, a crip. You just grow up! You want to see that talking about our streets. 
killing each other. You cussing, talking about, so whoop! Stop the violence. You confusing the kids. Put your rags down. I put my rag down. Yeah, there ain't no blood. I'm covered in the blood. I used to be LAP. I'm not LAP. My name is Kerry Battle. I'm pastor of the congregation for the Most High Yah. You want to change? You go be the change, then. You put your rag down, quit swallowing your pride. Don't be for yourself. Help more than bloods. Help the youth. Mm. Young men, you don't realize how, how much the time, how that time sit when a, when a judge gives you 25, 30 years. When a judge gives you a life sentence. Or the whole thing. That's the without part to it. Not 35 years before you come up for parole. Or the whole thing. When you die now. You want to be a change? Put put your guns and your, and, and your knives down. Quit showing them how to sell dope while you go get you a job. And be the example. Go to your community. Pull your clothes up. You start saying yes, sir. You be a better example. And maybe they'll follow you. See, they want to follow you throwing your signs up. I'm talking about every game. You tired of your streets dying, you be the change in your streets. You go watch. Talk to them about getting an education. Talk to them about them being Israel and come out of Babylon. Teach them how to kind of quit being a victim. Let's swallow our pride, men, and realize who was wrong. I was wrong for showing my brothers the gang life. I got a brother right now with 99 years since in the penitentiary. I got another brother, he always going through something. I got a best friend that got murdered at 15. I got a lot of friends that's in the penitentiary back and forth with drug addiction. Let's be the change we want to see. Grow up, men. Quit making all about you. You pastors, quit trying to be rich. Quit chasing women. Quit chasing men. Quit allowing homosexuals to have leadership. If you're a homosexual and you don't repent of your sins, you're going to hell. Period. I don't care if you're my family member. If you gay, you're going to hell if you don't repent. Bottom line. I love you enough to, enough to call your name out, but you know I'm talking to you. Let's be real leaders. Let's return back to Yah. Let's honor the Sabbath. Leave Sunday worship alone. Sunday is not your day. Put down the unclean foods. Honor the feast days. Let's turn back to the most high Yah. Let's swallow your pride because now you're on the glass. Oh, you getting upset? If you're getting offended, if you're talking bad about me, you in your pride and I'm saying it with joy. Because I was the same way. I got offended when I was approached someone telling me I was Israel. I was offended when they brought up the Sabbath. I was offended when it came down to the food. But I, studied this, I, I searched the scripture and realized that was the truth. It was wrong. So I become an outcast for your sake. So you can walk in the things of Yah. And him giving us the strength to do it. Pride versus humility. Heaven lesson, huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want y'all to look at Jeremiah 49, 16. It says this. It says, your terribleness has deceived you. The word terribleness, meaning your all, your great, your, 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 your great within yourself. Yo, you being great within yourself, you being awesome within yourself, it has deceived you. And the pride of your heart. Oh, you that dwells in the cleft of the rock, the high places, that hold the height of the hill, the one to think you high. Though you should make your nest as high as the eagle, Yah said, I will bring you down from there, from thence, says Yahuwah. You who are beside yourself, or you all who don't love your brother. I know some of y'all watch this, 
either are in the penitentiary or have been to the penitentiary. And you know how y'all get in y'all's Bible in there? Mm -hmm. They call it a jail. You know how I, you know how I can say that? Because I worked 10 years in corrections. It says, now therefore, my son, love your brethren. Why y'all killing one another then? Why you want to beat one another up? Why you want to try to rule one another? Why you want to try to hurt one another? It says, therefore, my son, love your brethren. And despise not in your heart your brother. Don't despise your brother. That's your brother. There ain't no blood. There ain't no crimp. There ain't no dope boy. That's your brother. He is real just like you. Greatest commandment to love our brother. The word says, despise not in your heart your brother. The sons and daughters of your people. I'm talking about black people. Israel. And those of you who are grafted into the covenant promises of Yahshua, who receive Yahuwah, the Elohim of the Shemayim, who's the only begotten son, Yahusha, who, 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 who we call Yahshua, who the word ignorantly calls Jesus. Those of us who say we love him, then why we got grudges and holding grudges against one another? Why are we talking about each other? Why are we putting one another down? Why are we dogging each other out? Why are we doing each other wrong if we're supposed to love one another? We can be deep though and say, you know how you how you how how, how you, you you get you got yeah we, 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 or how you know you didn't pass from death to life when you have love for your brother. We, we, we say that out of deepness, but they will despise each other. It says, therefore, my son, love your brother and despise not in your heart your brother, the sons and daughters of your people. And not taking a woman of them, for in pride is destruction and much trouble. Yeah, and, and lewdness is decay and great want. For lewdness is the mother of famine. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. We ain't going to go through all these. We're going to read the ones that's important and most how lead me to read them. And this right here is heavy. Second Baruch 48 40 says, Because of the inhabitants of the earth knew, with, uh, because, of, uh, because each of the inhabitants of the earth knew when he was transgressing, but but my Torah they knew not by reason of their pride. So you know what you're doing wrong. Everybody, you know where you shouldn't fornicate. You know where you shouldn't steal. You know you you, you know what you're doing wrong. You, you're going against the, the law, but you don't know y'all's Torah. Why why would you don't know y'all's Torah? Because you refuse to humble yourself and learn his Torah. So by your refusal to humble yourself and learn y'all's Torah, you're going to remain in your sin because your pride won't let you. How about just letting go? It's a song they got. They say, let go and let y'all. How about you? How about you doing that? How about you letting go and let, let the most high? No, you want to hold on to the wheel. You can't drive good. Let go. Oh, you, I got it, but you're sleepy. You still sleep. You're in a slumber. Let go. Obadiah says this in 1 verses 3 and 4. The pride of your heart has done what to you? Deceived you. Same thing to the adversary. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You that dwell in the cleft of the rock. You that put yourself in the high places. You that dwell in the cliff of the rock, whose habitation is high, that says in his heart or in his mind, in his thought process, who shall bring me down to the ground? Yeah, though you exalt yourself as the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars, this will I bring you down, says y'all. So y'all resist the proud. So I'm telling you now, talking to all of us. Everybody, all of us that walk in our pride. Came out and tell us nothing. We know all things. <laughs> we got it all together. Y'all gonna deal with us. So it's to, it's to our advantage to humble ourselves and let go. Like Don't put ourselves in the place that he'll come. You know, some folks fall far and break their legs. I know a friend, a, a guy I worked with, he was on a ladder at his house. He fell out and broke his femur bone. Some folks fall and break their hips, their arms. Some of them fall and break their backs and their necks. 
Some even fall to their death. I guess I guess it's how you fall and how high you were. So how far are you in your pride that when you fall it's gonna kill you? How about just walking down, backing yourself down, uh, and touching the ground safely and humbling yourself? Praise God, count the cops. Yeah, we need to grow up, don't we? Yeah, we need to grow up. I'm talking about every last one of us. Because you know we all get in our feelings. Hmm. And we be so deep in our feelings. And we allow our emotions to cloud our sound judgment. Psalms 10 again, verses 4 through 6. The wicked through his, excuse me, the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after Elohim. Wicked folks don't seek after y'all. No, they don't. I go to church, and what does that mean? <laughs> you don't humble yourself. You don't honor the Sabbath. You know what's a shame? It's all these so-called word churches or so-called Sunday churches. All this internet we got, of all this truth, of all this history. We even told them, you can look at Canon 29 and see that you should not be worshiping y'all on a Sunday. Canon 29. Google it. Mm. It tells you. But yeah, we still choose to disobey y'all. We, we, we're so in deception, we think the Jewish people or the trip to the trip mm. of the when how many white folks you seen came from the east in, in, in Africa, the area? Mm. Ain't no white Africans. Mrs. Mandela said that. Mm. Now, I, I ain't talking about migrating. <laughs> Come on, originally. Mm. You say a black man is a true, it's, it's a true Israelite, they say you crazy. But they wanted to justify a man putting his pins in another man's butt and say it's okay to be born like that. Which one sounds more far-fetched? Which one seems more ridiculous? We can, we have regard for a dog's life above a human. We 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 we'll, we'll go to jail over uh, uh, harm somebody with a dog. But yeah, we let a man lay on the ground on the sidewalk for his bed at night. Won't feed him. Let him freeze to death outside. But we got these no-kill shelters and trying to adopt dogs. Anyway, it says this right here. Uh, 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 the wicked, the wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after Elohim. Elohim is not and all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Your judges are far above out of his sight. Y'all's judges are. As for all his enemies, he puffs at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. That's called pride. A man's pride shall bring him well. Low. That ain't how that's low. But honor shall uphold the humble and ruach. So before I go, I want to say this. We have to humble ourselves, you all. Let's, let's grow up for real. Let's humble ourselves let, let, so that y'all can really help us with us. So we can learn how to please him. Hallelujah. Let's stop being so easily offended. Getting upset, you know, uh, thinking we know all things. Hmm. Let's humble ourselves. Let's become more prayerful. Let's get in the word. Let's seek Yah so that he can really help us to please him. Hallelujah. I don't want Yah to resist me, and you should not want Yah to resist you. And in order for Yah not to resist us, we have to humble ourselves. So I beseech you, my brothers and my sisters, let's humble ourselves. Let's repent of our sins. 
is ask Yah to help us to be how he designed and desired for us to be. Let's pray for that conviction of sin. Let's pray that he lead and guide us into all truth. Hallelujah. So Almighty Yah, we thank you. We just magnify your Kodesh name. We pray and ask you, Almighty, to help us to live a, a Kodesh life for you. Kadosh, 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 for you are Kadosh. Holy, if, for, those who, for those who don't understand what that word means. Or is, you are set apart, Lord. And I pray, Almighty Yah, in the name of Yahushua, help us to be set apart for as you are set apart. To humble ourselves, to walk in your character, not the character of the adversary. To walk in your humility, to walk in your obedience, to walk in your will, to do your ways, Almighty. We love you and we thank you. Help us not be prideful. Help us not be deceived or to deceive others. Help us not have an attitude of arrogance. But teach us, Almighty, how to walk in humility. Show us how to please you and to do your will. How to live for you and to surrender ourselves to you. For you are our strength. And without you, we're strengthless. We have no strength. You are our keeper. Without you, we cannot be killed. So I'm asking and praying, Almighty Yah, show us your way, show us your will, teach us your, 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 your will, how to live for you. We thank you. We just believe your code now we magnify you. We, we surrender ourselves to you. So us how to love our brothers, how to love those who are without, how to love how to love those who make it hard to love them. Show us how to love those who don't love us, to stand firm as you've commanded us to, and not be forced to be led by our own opinions, but to be led by your Ruach Hakodesh, your Spirit, Almighty God, your Holy Spirit. So I thank you, Almighty for being our teacher. I thank you, Almighty, for being our strength. And I'm asking you, Almighty, to show us your ways and keep us close to you. So we thank you and we praise you. In Yahushua HaMashiach's name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you. So Pastor Karen's going to come and give us some announcements. And then we're going to um, see you all uh, next week. So praise you for you all. We love everyone. And Pastor Karen will come give us some announcements. Yes. We're going to Pastor Karen come and she's going to be Give us some don't you, don't, 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 don't you look, you know, beautiful today? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I carry her on my side. <laughs> Praise Yah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Praise Yah for such a powerful word coming from Pastor Bell today. Um, so such true words. We must learn how to walk in humility. And something that he said is, um, can we count the cost? Or you know, how far are we so caught up in pride that when we do fall, will it be to death? Or will it be to a, a crippling that you never recover from? Or will it be something that I will allow you to recover quickly? I don't think any of us want to experience any of those. So we need to count the cost and rid ourselves of pride. Praise God for Brother Isaiah today bringing forth the word that sparked up humility and pride. And he, he has scripture verses that are listed in the comments to go back and listen to them. Because not only did uh, he preach them, but he brought out some uh, a very strong uh, example in Nebuchadnezzar in the book of um, Daniel, which Pastor Bell also mentioned. So go back and listen to it. I think it is, you know, just really rich and powerful what Abba is doing. And Brother Isaiah is considered one of our young adults. You know, he brought the word today. So hallelujah, look at what the Father is doing. Encourage your youth, your young adult, to take a listen to that word because it is power packed, filled up the Ruach, and very true and timely. Now, as far as announcements, if you would like to give uh, to the ministry, in the uh, comments below are listed uh, our PayPal, our Cash App, our, um, uh, I'm missing one, Square, Square link that you're able to give. It will be a blessing um, uh, to receive any love offerings, tithe, or however our uh, moves upon you to give it will be put to use for the assembly and for outreach that we do we do on a regular and people contact us so that will be a blessing in receiving whatever I will lead you to to give now we are getting ready for Shavuot 2021 like I'm so excited uh just from on the end from the inside I'm like yes 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 hallelujah so on 
uh, the week of uh, June 27th, uh, specifically on Sunday, the last weekend in June, we will be going down to Richfield Springs, um, New York. <laughs> oh, well, up. Yeah, I guess that is uh, technically up. Up to, <laughs> up to Richfield Springs, New York. And we're going to be with our, our family, the <coughs> House of Yah. Uh, in New York, and they are located <coughs> specifically in Bronx, New York. So we're totally excited. Uh, we have others that will be coming with us. So we want you to know that we're going to tune in. We will be live as much as we can be live. It will be um, one service, um, and on Shabbat, we will try to tune in. So, you know, don't get lost on us. Join us. Be a part, and I think you will be truly blessed. For all those that will be accompanying us down to Shavuot, uh, up to Shavuot, I got to get that together. Um, there will be a Zoom with details, uh, with itinerary, uh, some do's and don'ts, some things we're going to go over that you need to tune into. So we look forward to seeing you within the next 20 to 35 minutes on Zoom. You all be blessed. It finish enjoying this day of Shabbat. And if you don't know Hamashiach, get to know him. Turn into Shuba. And remember to walk in the love of the Most High. Ahava. Hallelujah. Praise and blessings to the Most High. And we'll see you again next Shabbat.